Let's kick some ass on this TV theme song Thursday. You ready now? I'm ready. Seven minutes in. Let's you ready? go. If you didn't start with that other stuff, we could have gone. All right, here we go. And you got you know surprise, what surprise. Rob Parker has a bone to pick with LeBron James. Who me? Yeah, LeBron. Uh, uh, he didn't like the 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 sh- color of his shoes the other day. I had yeah, nothing to do with shoes. He didn't shoes. like those funky socks LeBron wears with his high water pants. That's is that what you want to go at him? At? No. It is. It looked it looked pretty fresh last night in in uh, Miami. Is that why you no, got? Where high- was he at? Brooklyn. Is that why you got D-Way's high water on too? Are you no, look- like you said, it's stylish. You got a high water. Mine too? aren't really high like like they wear them today. Okay. Not like culottes or something. They're no, not that no, high. no, 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 no. All right. Now, my, my I am fresh dressed like a million bucks through on the ballet shoes and the fly green socks. You don't know what that I is. I do know that. The hip hoppers know. Okay, yeah. 50 year old hip hopper. I know Slick Rick. Six minutes. Uh oh, look at you. A little bit of rhythm. I remember that. Come on, man. <laughs> All <laughs> this right. is not six minutes. This is no, no, but story. six minutes. Though, six minutes, Dougie my... Fresh. You're on that. Come on, that's what all time classic. Lottie Dottie was that quote. Lottie Dottie. Lottie Dottie. We like, we the, like party. the party. We don't cause trouble. We don't know, bother nobody. All right, so here's my problem with LeBron James the Lakers are in a crisis. Can you please stand up and give some leadership? We, have, we heard from Magic Johnson, who doesn't work there anymore. We haven't heard from Rob Palenka. We haven't heard from uh, Jeannie Buss. We haven't heard from anybody of authority. Why is Kyle Kuzma speaking for the organization? <laughs> a second-year player is speaking Lonzo. for— Lonzo. Right? Lonzo was dropping And knowledge. Lonzo, who didn't even play for the last four months. Really? <laughs> I mean that that's who is gonna speak for the lake. This has this storied franchise, those are the cats out front while LeBron is out uh, uh going to see Dwayne Wade and partying with It's a him. farewell he, tour. No, but he celebrated that Magic had stepped down, they had a big party. That's what the party was about. <laughs> they had a good time and, and nobody was boo hooing, they were drinking and 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 everything. He skipped the exit meeting. He hadn't done anything since this whole bomb show broke down. This is why he got so much criticism this year is because he's a horrible, horrible leader. I told you this. All right, look. He's a bad leader. Are you done? I'm about to set you straight. Number one, I do agree that LeBron James needed to say something. Tuesday night after Magic Step down, he could have said something, but I get it. You're stunned, you're shocked, you're angry, you don't really know what to say. It might not come off well. Okay, Wednesday morning, get a good night's rest, think about it. Wednesday morning early, come and say something, and then you can fly to Brooklyn for Dwayne Wade's last game. Okay, he should have said something. However, if he had stepped up as the leader that Rob Parker is saying he should have, If he had come out and said, look, I love Magic Johnson. We all love Magic Johnson. He is an all-time great. I wish he were staying here, but guess what? The Los Angeles Lakers are going to be fine. I'm here. I'm going to make sure that this franchise gets back on track during my tenure here. If he had said something to that effect, Rob Parker and those of his ilk – You would have been right there sitting in that chair in front of that microphone saying, I told you, LeBron James wants to run the Lakers. Yeah, the magic was barely out the door, and LeBron's talking about how everything's going to be all right because it's my watch. LeBron wants to hire the next president. LeBron wants to hire the next coach. LeBron wants to be in Genie Buss's ear. That's what you and your ilk would have said, Rob Parker. You know it. You know it. No, I wouldn't have. Because you live to rip LeBron. If you're writing, you're ripping. That's true, but you I'm also LeBron, the guy. That's who you're ripping. I'm also the guy I want you to remember who called LeBron the Walot. Do you remember that? W L O A T. The worst leader of all time. He just proved it again. Yay. He's got a young team. They needed LeBron to step up and stop the noise. Stop the madness. Let everybody know I'm going to steady the ship. We'll get this righted. We'll get you another guy. You wouldn't have been saying. Yes, I see, would have. Right. I would have said I'm no. Right. right. No, but no, he look. didn't say anything. I, I'm with you. He should have spoken. But hold on. Why are we killing LeBron? 
When Jeannie Buss has yet to speak, you're the owner. When Rob Palinka, the GM, now everybody's talking about how you're going to have carte blanche in the franchise. It's your front office now. Where's he at? To I, your I point, said why that. Kuzma, I, why Lonzo? I did why mention. Why Kincavious Caldwell Pope? None of those guys should be talking, and you're right. Palinka and, and Jeannie Buss, the owner, should have spoken, but LeBron as the face of the franchise. More and the whole, so than them, though? Yes. Of that list, yes, he's third. Yes. Jeannie, number no, one. No, but he's the— Palinka, number but two. But he's one LeBron, of— LeBron, number three. But you know his existence counts a lot for what's going on here, and they're not going to be rebuilding because they have LeBron James. They know they have to put pieces around him. That's why LeBron is— He should have spoke. That's, I, that's, why LeBron, that. that's why LeBron is important here. Because people want to know that LeBron is cool with what's going on and this is not going to be a bail job and they're not going to uh, dump LeBron or, or just start over or whatever. And I think to hear, I don't want him to get up there and, and give a, a two-hour speech or do an hour press conference like Magic did, but just go up there to say, hey, this came as a shock to me. I was as surprised as everybody, but we got to move on. Magic felt like he had to do what we, he needed to do, and we need to do what we need to do, which is to get this thing straightened out and win a championship for this great city. That's all I would like to hear from him. That's it, Chris. I agree. I agree. No Magna Carta. That's all I needed. I agree. Is that a good term? But you would have been ripping him, right? Every chance I get. All right, JJ, you're on with Chris and Rob. What's happening? Let me ask you, do you know Rob personally? No, I do not know Rob personally, but I will say this. He's a legend in these streets out here in the D. Oh, yeah. And, and, he ain't look, got no look, street grid look, in the D. And look, and look, if like like you always say, Chris, if he's writing, he's ripping. We love it out here in the D. That's you know right. So, that was so, my motto. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll give you straight from the horse's mouth. I give you that love. Go ahead. Now, but look, listen, guys, this whole, this whole genie bus thing, magic thing, Rob Palinka thing. Now, I don't, I've heard y'all talk about, uh, talk about it, you know, briefly some time ago. But remember, Rob Palinka is the same guy who represented Carlos Boozer yes. when he when he left Cleveland after giving, uh, I think it was Paxton at the time, Jim Paxton, yep. his word, his word. Uh, that he was going to resign. He he left and went to Utah and signed a sixty eight million dollar deal. This is this is the same Rob Palinka. So when Magic's talking about backstabbing, when Magic's talking about trust issues. I think there was a fallout between Magic and Palinka, and I think Jeannie, let's look, Jeannie is to blame for all of this. At the end of the day, Jeannie's to blame for all this because Jeannie is running the Lakers like it's some nickel and dime shop in, in, uh, over there in Harlem in New York. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, I've no, never you, seen. Look, you, JJ, you're, you're right, you're you're right, right on, on the money He's spot on every on. single thing because. Because Chris even talked yeah. about this yesterday. No, JJ, uh, thanks for the call. No question about it. Uh, Magic was tired of the backbiting. And he wanted to get rid of, you said, Rob Palenka he, and, yep, and Luke, Luke Wall. And Jeannie wouldn't let him get rid of Rob because of Kobe. Kobe, that's Kobe's and guy. That, Kobe has her ear. There's and no Palenka goes it. and and, and uh, Luke Walton and Phil Jackson yep. right in there, some connection. Yeah. Hey, Dan in uh, Green Bay, you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What you got, Dan? Hey, guys, how are you? Doing great. great. Man, how are you? I'm good. So you know, being you know being in the Midwest and hearing all this stuff about about the Lakers, do you? Do you guys almost think that because the way the Lakers season turned out the way it did, that it almost put some pressure on Magic, considering that, you know, LeBron to the Lakers has been a hot topic for the past two years. And I also wanted to ask really quick, how far do you guys have the Bucks going in the playoffs? Well, it definitely put pressure on Magic. Because um, nobody expected this. Nobody. No. I mean, to say that LeBron came to the Lakers – and their uh, playoff streak, non-playoffs, continued, got bigger, right? went to six years. I don't think anybody expected that. And Magic doesn't like criticism. He's rarely been criticized. The few times he has when he was a coach and they lost 10 straight, he stepped down. When he was a talk show host and it wasn't going well, he stepped down. And now as president of uh, basketball operations for the Lakers, a lot of criticism, he stepped down. So that, he doesn't like that either. As far as the Bucks. I hope I'm wrong because I would love to see the Bucks. I hope the Bucks make the NBA Finals, but I think Toronto gets them 
in the uh, Eastern Conference Finals. I, I picked think Toronto experience. from the start. I still love Toronto. Yeah, I think the Raptors experience with Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green. I mean, nobody on the Bucks has won a playoff series. None of their significant players. Brooke Lopez may have down the road, you know, way right. back. But So I think that experience will get them at least for this year. Let's go to Stefan in Charlotte. You're on with Chris and Rob. Hey, what's going on, guys? How are you? Good. Good man. What's happening? You? Nothing much. So I am not surprised, and I'm going to blame it all on LeBron, because this is the same LeBron that quits in games, that did the decision. He isn't a good leader. He has never been a good leader, and I think it's kind of his fault. But, Rob, i got a quick question for you. All right. All right. So if you go outside every day for 30 days and it's sunny, and you say, I think today it's going to rain, the day it finally rains, are you a meteorologist? Uh, Probably. <laughs> I don't think you are, and I don't think you know anything about Tom Brady, my friend. Oh, is that <laughs> so what this is? <laughs> wow. So he's saying when you're right six years from now and the Patriots I was right. Tom anymore. Brady. Hey, hey, Stefan, Tom Brady, I said he was going to look like a 40, 40-year-old quarterback, and he did. No touchdowns, one pick, and one fumble in the Super Bowl. He was trash. He was garbage. He was bad. They won in spite of him, Stefan. This is the year where I'm going to be right. And Count I was right. Rings, my friend. Count the rings. That's all Stop right. Stop it. <laughs> okay, thanks. Let's go to Marty in Kentucky. You're on with Chris and Rob. Look at that. He snuck in. That was like a Pearl he Harbor did. move. Right. Hey, Chris and Rob. How y'all doing? We're great, We're doing man. good, Marty. And I I jumped on here real late today, but I still got through. Um, I Rob, I didn't know you was from Detroit. My mama's family's from Inkster. I had to ask if they've heard of the Haboat. Oh, yeah, they know me. I work for both I, newspapers, every TV station, every radio oh, station in town. I, I wasn't so born in Detroit, but I lived there for 22 years, and that's my second home. I love Detroit. Oh, that's cool, man. I, I'll ask about you now. On the subject, <laughs> I got to throw a lot of blame around, and, and I would love to put 100% on LeBron. I'd love to, but I can't. I got to be honest. All right. I, I, I would give LeBron a small amount of the blame because of the pressure that he brings. And, but, and I would give a little to Magic and Palenka. They didn't get along. I told y'all guys, you guys the other day they were here at the OVC tournament. I, I didn't mention Palenka, but he was there too. And I, Magic did not smile the whole time. I'm standing there watching wow. because, I've, you know, there's a legend in front of me. And I'm like, Magic's not smiling. That's not Magic Johnson. And, and, and I, did, I didn't pick up on it, but the man wasn't happy. Wow. And uh, even Larry Fitzgerald was at that game. Even he knows who John Moran is. But I was watching him, too. Now, Jeannie Butt what is the biggest to blame here. I think you guys are right. She just doesn't know what she's doing. Yeah, no, hey, idea. Marty, yeah. no There's, doubt it's, about it's, it. It's very clear. It is. It is very clear that the late – I mean, the fact that – I mean, heck, you don't have to be the greatest owner in the world to know – that somebody has to come out, face the cameras, and say something, even if you just make it be Rob Palenka. It should be Jeannie just because she is such a well-known owner. She's at every game. Obviously, Magic mentioned her a lot in his you know, statement or whatever you want to call it, his, his farewell interview. But, you know, owners don't always talk. Yeah, but, but you, but you have push, to talk. You, you got to push Rob Palinka. Get out there, make a statement. I agree, she should have. But at the very least, you got to make him do it. Somebody has to do it, not the kids. They're floundering. Right. NBA insider from Yahoo. Chris, right. we want to welcome you, man. Great news. You FS1. are joining FS1, Fox Sports 1, as an NBA analyst, man. It's great to have you aboard. Wow, thank you, man. Fox would be part of the family like this, man. So, uh, you know, now, now that now that I'll, I'll be seeing a lot more of you, Chris, now you can finally <laughs> stop avoiding me on that on that hardwood. Man. You know, I was Uh-oh. just about to say the same exact thing to Uh-oh. you. <laughs> so it's on. I just want everybody to know I'm 50, but it's on. Hey. So I got a built-in oh. excuse if I lose, I'm 50. Chris, how old are you? Chris I don't is like know. 31. No, Chris, how old are you? He's young. He's still he's still in his prime. Are you in your I, I, 30s? I, I, I'm 37. Oh my God! This, this is so like young. this is like if Jordan and LeBron play one on one. You LeBron would win, but you can't give him no props for that. You're so that's, that's I'm not even sure he's gonna beat me. I'm just saying in yeah. case. That's your excuse. <laughs> All right, nah, now, you're pretty sure. You're now, sure. Now, now Chris, yeah, he's, he's sure. Chris, yeah. has, Chris has an excuse, but does LeBron have an excuse not to have spoken to this point? I mean, a lot's going on. The uh, Lakers are in turmoil. 
Uh, LeBron getting his groove on at parties, going uh, cross country to be at Dwayne Wade's uh, final game. I mean, uh, should he have uh, spoken by now, Chris? Yeah, I think I think he should have spoken. I, I think obviously the Lakers gave him an out yesterday uh, for not addressing the media, being that he had to go cross country, or he was allowed to go cross country to go check out Dwayne Wade's final game. But no, definitely, I think. Um, uh, at some point he should have spoken. But, you know, I, I think if you ask him, I think he's done two one-on-one sit-downs with you know, the legendary Hill, well, Mr. Hill and and uh, the Allie Clifton of the um, Lakers TV network. Uh, but, no, that, that, that's not an excuse. I, I think if you can do that, yeah, you know, I think you should be able to address the, uh, the mass media in and, that area. And, Chris, that's because the fans, they want to know LeBron, right, this year – the whole people coming down on LeBron is he's not a good leader. I call him the Wolote, the worst leader of all time. And now here's a leadership situation, and we're hearing from Lonzo Ball and Kyle Kuzma? I mean, I just don't get that. Yeah. Yeah, that's not ideal. That's not ideal. And those guys, they don't know how to handle that. They don't know how to – they don't have context. You know, they, they haven't been in the league long enough to, to, to properly address these type of issues. And so, no, nah, it, it was unfortunate. I mean, the only two veterans that speak about it, but nobody really wants to, you know, hear from them to that extreme is, you know, JaVale McGee and Tyson Chandler. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I, I think I think he should have addressed the media before he was out. Uh, you know, he didn't even hold, you know, when he came to the came to the Lakers, he didn't hold an introductory press, press conference. And, you know, people took that a certain way as well. So, no, I, I definitely, I'm definitely, I definitely get you on that, Rob, and that, it's definitely valid. Chris, it is looking like Jeannie Buss, God bless her, sweet person, but that she is way Why are you in, saying that? You don't need to say that. Let me finish my question. She is way in <laughs> over her head. I mean, it, it, it looks, and the problem is she's been hiring you know, everybody's got the Laker ties, the family. My brother, you know, Kobe tells her to hire Palinka, so she does. You know, Magic is her quote-unquote brother from back in the day, so she hires him. Like Rambus' wife. Going, Rambus, Kurt Rambus' wife. And now there's rumors that Rambus could end up being a GM or a president uh, hired in the near future. Do you think she's going to do the right thing now? And get a real front office or at least a real president in place or just go about business as usual and hire somebody with Laker ties who's greatest. And I'm not saying it, they can't have Laker ties like a Jerry West or Pat Riley, but their their main you know, selling point for the job, their main qualification for the job is they're a Laker. You know, Derek Fisher or whoever. Do you think how do you think she's going to handle this? Look, if it's going to be somebody with Laker ties, it has to be somebody proven, uh, a veteran proven to hold that position that has a very great track record. That's the only way, it, you know, you know, it has to be Laker ties. Uh, outside of that, because there's not many of those guys out there, because you mentioned a few of them, and they're not available. Pat Riley ain't coming over. Jerry West is not coming over. Uh, so in that regard, man, there's two names that come to my mind when, when it's, if you're talking about being serious about bringing in somebody who's competent who can handle that role. David Griffin, former Cavaliers GM, that's my number one. Right. And then also Bob Myers. If they can take a stab at Bob Myers, pull him from the Warriors, I think that makes all the sense in the world. But if you're trying to hire somebody who's familiarity with the with the family, with the bus family and the Laker organization, but they're still – uh, they're still a newbie when it comes to front office management, then, then you're making the same mistake all over again. You need to have hire somebody proven, experienced, uh, somebody who knows how to handle uh, a national spotlight, somebody who's used to ha- handling and dealing with high-profile athletes. And, you know, those two um, execs who I've named, they fit all, they fit all the, those categories. And I think if she's serious, I think she needs to go outside of the Lakers' brass. How about uh, as we approach, uh, you know, the playoffs are coming, but then you got the free agency this summer and current state, the Lakers are a mess. I didn't think anybody was coming anyway to join LeBron. But now with everything undone, I mean, how could this be an attractive place? You have an aging star in LeBron. Uh, you have some uh, question marks about the kids who were supposed to be this core, Chris. Uh, you know, we don't know about Brandon Ingram. Uh, uh, Lonzo hasn't been able to stay healthy for two years. 
Uh, Josh Hart has a, a bad knee. I mean, you start looking at this. Is this an attractive place to come? And you got an owner who might be the worst female owner in the history of sports. I mean, how is this attractive? Well, look, I, I'll say this. You know, it, it definitely helps that they're in Los Angeles. You know, that that, that, that helps a lot. Uh, with, with all that being said, it, it definitely puts their free agency, period. It definitely puts them in, in a worse situation because, like, there was never any – Major, well, I'll say this: the, the, the top tier free agents, there, there was never a direct link um, to the Lakers. Like right. we always heard of the, the, the top ones going elsewhere or, or staying with their team. Now, with the Lakers front office in flux, you know it's even more incompetence. It's, it's even more question marks, and, and, and I think it just puts them in a, it just puts them in a dire situation. Now, if they can hurry up. Hire somebody proven. Hire somebody, you know, hire somebody and, and kind of, you know, I'm not saying right the wrongs, but just get this get this thing selling so we can see some signs, see some steps that, they, they, that they're taking towards improving this ball club and restoring the franchise to prominence before free agency. Then I think that that, that should be the plan. That should be the route that they take. They, it's, this should happen expeditiously. This should be... They, they they should get to going now. The the longer that this thing waits out, uh, drags out, I, I think I think it hurts them long run. When I'm talking about long run, I think it hurts them when it comes to free agency. They need to get things in order now. Get somebody that people respect, somebody who has a proven record, and they can get the ball rolling. It's where the I Cup. We're joined by Chris Haynes, senior NBA insider for Yahoo Sports, and now FS1 NBA analyst. And Chris, there have been a lot of talk, a lot of scuttlebutt around the league that. A lot of people, executives on other teams, agents around the league, do not trust or like Rob Palinka, and that that has been a problem for the Lakers. I've heard the same thing myself. Are you hearing that as well? And how big of an issue do you think this is for the Lakers? Well, look, you know, there's no secret. You know, Palinka, you know, he doesn't answer a lot of phone calls and things of that nature. So it's always, you know, he's always had that talk. I mean, it was it was like that when he was an agent. But I, I, I'll, I'll say this: is that if they want to, if if Rob Plink is going to stay on, fine, You're fine, no no problem with that whatsoever. But you got to hire somebody in, in in Magic's former role who who is a veteran, somebody who's going to take care of most of the day to day, somebody who's going to be communicative, you know, with players, agents, other executives, owners. You know, you need somebody in in, in there who's a people person, you know, who can, who can talk and communicate. That's really important. And so, um, you know, and look. It, I, I I don't know what I don't know what the future holds for Polinka. I know he he's okay as of right now, but you know I, I think I think Jeannie has to allow whoever comes in, allow them if they if they feel the necessary need to do so, allow them to clean house if that's what they want right. to do, bringing their own people. Well, she like, wouldn't let Magic clean, clean house, get... or she didn't yeah, want exactly, him to. You know exactly. She didn't want him to. She didn't want him to. I mean, if it was up to Magic, Magic would have you know he would have had Luke Walton out during the season. So, you know, he didn't have the full authority, you know, like that that he was told he would have when he took the job. So it has to be, you know, they have to let whoever comes in um, take take over the reins and do what they feel is best for the franchise. And in order for, I, I believe, in order for her to do that, it has, it has to be somebody that's competent, somebody that's proven. That, that, this, this hire is going to be extremely important for the franchise. No question. All, All right, right Chris. Chris Haynes, FS1 NBA analyst. Thanks for the Yahoo knowledge. Sports Insider. Thanks, brother. We appreciate it. Y'all take care and of And you guy. better be working on your J. Uh-oh. See, hey, I'll take you straight to the post. I'll, you can say it's off. <laughs> I see I, you I, got I, a little weight hey. on you now. Uh-oh. I definitely see you got a little weight <laughs> on you, so, uh, you know. Yeah, it <laughs> you ain't, ain't, it ain't muscle. Dixie. It ain't, I can't say that. It ain't muscle. <laughs> It's, it's those Marriott muscles. That's what it is. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Right? You those know late it. Night, late night muscles. I know. Yeah, I get it. We all, all right. got them. We all got Marriott muscles. All right, brother. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Take care, guys. Peace. See, he didn't know I was that witty. No. no. He didn't.